This is the wire for 2330 Zulu, October 18th, 2023. Precedence is routine. Information cutoff date is 2300. Bottom line up front. Tensions remain high following Gaza hospital incident. Russia increases presence patrols in the Black Sea. Starting with international events, in the Middle East, Israeli state media announces that all preparations for the ground invasion of Gaza are complete. The situation regarding the Gaza hospital strike remains unclear as information warfare takes center stage. Debate continues as to whether the strike was indeed an Israeli airstrike or a failed Hamas rocket attack. Various Arab states continue to issue travel advisories and recall notices for their citizens abroad. Demonstrations throughout the Middle East continue to be extremely kinetic as tensions remain high throughout the region. In Russia, President Putin gives the order for persistent combat air patrols to begin in the neutral airspace over the Black Sea. In a televised address, Putin specifically mentioned that the MiG-31 aircraft will be armed with KH-47 Kinzhal missiles, NATO reporting name AS-24 Killjoy. These are Russia's newest hypersonic ballistic missiles that, in his speech, Putin specifically mentioned would be within range of the American carrier strike groups in the Mediterranean Sea. On the home front in the United States, Biden to address the nation at 2000 Romeo or 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow evening. Analyst comments for this wire. Follow on information regarding the Gaza hospital strike has not resulted in the confirmation of anything. We're not entirely certain a strike was even conducted on the physical hospital building. Mountains of evidence exist to prove any narrative, but sifting through the fake photos and videos will take some time to increase analytical certainty as to what happened. Regardless of the truth, the Arab world is outraged, and based on the statements of regional leaders, there is very little distinction between an airstrike and a failed missile launch. In the absence of forensic evidence, many Arab leaders consider the attack to be Israel's fault even if it was a Hamas rocket, as Hamas would not have conducted the attack without Israel's attacks on Palestine. However flawed this logic may be, this appears to be the narrative playing out in many public statements by foreign pundits and leaders, as well as online chatter surrounding the incident. Consequently, it is already too late for the truth to result in restraint on either side. Demonstrations will likely continue and increase in severity as the Israeli ground offensive begins. Vladimir Putin's casual reference to American aircraft carriers being within range of hyper Sonic missiles may seem to be alarming, but is almost certainly Putin's classic way of warning the West. American carrier strike groups can be targeted in any number of ways, much less by aircraft that will have to fly over NATO airspace in Turkey to cause trouble. However, this reference does indicate the opposition to U.S. presence in the Med. As the United States continues nearly persistent cargo flights into Israel, and mainstream media reporting references potentially thousands of U.S. troops becoming involved in some way with this conflict, these actions will be perceived as U.S. aggression in the region. On the diplomatic front, atmospherics indicate the U.S. has taken a back seat. U.S. officials have been kept waiting by foreign leaders, or meetings with American politicians have been canceled outright. Other interactions between U.S. officials and Arab leaders have been lukewarm at best. As Israel begins the ground operation in Gaza, the potential for flashpoints to occur is extremely high, which may cause problems not just on the diplomatic front, but here at home as well. This concludes The Wire for 2330 Zulu, 18 October 2023.